So we have people from all over the Middle East coming together, Arabs and Israelis, for a, a historic event. And we also have many thousands of people from all over the world participating on YouTube, all coming together for peace. So before we get started, and we really talk about what we're going to be doing with the intention experiment, I wanted to introduce two amazing people who are going to just say a few words about peace. Um, the first one is really one of the people responsible for this event. It's Dr. Salah Al Rashid. And I think I and many, many others refer to him as the Deepak Chopra of the Middle East. <laughs> Salah brought human potential, the human potential movement to the Middle East. And he's been an amazing peace advocate. And thanks to him, we are broadcasting in southern England in Smart Ways Studio. Smart Ways Studio. So without further ado, I want Dr. Salah, who's been such a peace advocate, just to say a few words about peace and what it means to him to bring Arabs and Israelis together. Well, thank you, Lynn. This is your experiment. This is your intention. We are following, trying to push the intention to come to reality, just to be manifested. But the work, your work, Gene's work, and the work that was done uh, years and years ago, now we're seeing it to manifest. In the Middle East 20 years ago, I remember if we wanted to buy a book in Arabic, it was not available for personal development. There was like maybe two or three books. Now almost all the books are translated and they are bought by thousands and thousands of people. So this is now, we're coming to an, a new age where we're, we're trying to be wherever we are. We can be Jews, Christians, Muslims, Buddhists, we can be Arabs, uh, Israelis, Americans, Europeans. Chinese, whatever we are, now we're, we're all coming together to form this change that we've been looking for for a long time, and this is the time. And it's always, if we don't do it, then who's going to do it? And it's, if we don't do it now, then when are we going to do it? So we had the pleasure with, with all my friends, and I have hundreds of thousands of people in the Middle East that shared in these experiments, and we, we, have, we had the pleasure to share with Lynn. The, the intention experiment with her in Sri Lanka one, the America September 11 one, and the last one also Afghanistan one, and also the last one. So, and this is also the fifth time we, we share all these thousands are coming together. We're not going to leave it for the politician to do the job. We're not going to leave it for the, for, um, with all respect to all the politicians and the religious people, we're not going to leave it for them to do it. We have to do the job, and that's what... We're not afraid of bad people doing bad things. What I'm afraid of is good people not doing good enough, not doing enough work. So, with, with all being said, I, I would like to welcome all of you, and both of our hands are open to a new door, and let's just make it and go to a new level. And thank you, Lynn. Thank you so much, Salah. Um, <clears throat> it really is, has been Salah's amazing journey to bring so many people from around all of the Gulf states in the Arab countries to peace work. And he just started with groups. I'm going to speak a little bit about groups later, but that's what he did. He just started with groups, little peace groups in different countries, and they grew and they grew and they grew. And what I hope you're going to understand about our event tonight is that it doesn't take the politicians to create peace. It doesn't take the big people in charge. It just takes a group, a small group, and that starts to grow. Now, before we move on, I also wanted to introduce somebody else who's another amazing person in the personal development movement. In fact, I think she invented the personal development <laughs> movement, and that is the incredible, famous, amazing, uh, unmistakable Jean Houston, futurist and woman extraordinaire, who's going to speak. Of, she's 
part of the summit we've been doing here for the Middle East, and she's going to say a few words about peace, too. Well, thank you, my dear friend, and my friends who are at the cutting edge of human possibility. Truly, both of you are in this magnificent summit and this extraordinary experiment. You know, when we talk about peace, it's, it's become to many people, it's, it's what it is, what life is not. But I wanted to be for something. I wanted, don't let the war boys hog it all. The spit and the spice and the glamour. Peace is reaching and sprouting. It's growing things. It's education, which there's no such thing as a stupid child. There's just magnificent systems in which children uh, bring art and music and drawing to the table of creating a new society. Peace is about the creation of a society. It is about the emergence that is, the, that is there, trembling beneath the surface crust of life and consciousness, ready to say, oh, we're going to last. We're going to find ourselves in the throes of becoming a new kind of species, a species of feast. I want all of you out there, as you perform this experiment, dear friends, think about what does peace really look like? What does it taste like? What does it smell like? What is the everyday manner of peace? Because I think we've forgotten. For goodness sakes, in the morning, don't let the first thing that you do is to turn on your cell phone and look for the bad news of the day. Don't do that. Practice peace. Peace practices. Let, let yourself be lured by what it is and what it can be and what a world that is peaceful really looks and... Hey, bravo. Whoever it was, it was coming. Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Hey, Jerusalem. Jerusalem. <laughs> so this is an experiment in not just the creation of a peace, but also the consideration of what it looks like, feels like, so that peace, the new idea of peace, can be the lure of becoming. It is practical, it is energetic, it is full of ideas most of us now in these times have been born to make peace. So as we do the experiment, let us think on what peace is in the most basic way, from the gurgling cry of a baby to the sweetness of the elder giving us their sense of what life is. It is beauty, it is love, it is glory, it is practical, it is peace. Thank you so much, Jean. Thank you, thank you both. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to run this experiment in English. We have people listening who speak English, who speak many different languages, including Arabic and Hebrew. So for simplicity, we'll stay with English. Um, but if you don't understand, if you can ask someone nearby to help translate for you. So, before we actually start our experiment, I want to explain to you the big idea we have. And I have some slides I'm going to show you before we actually get into the nitty gritty of it to find out where this idea came from. So, if we can show our slides as I'm going along, so this started with an experiment I did with Dr. Salah al-Rashid uh, at the 10th anniversary of 9-11. I don't know about you, but I was pretty tired of those buildings, those images of those buildings burning down every year for 10 years. And I was really determined to do something else. So I thought, and as soon as I did think of it, I thought of Dr. al-Rashid, and I thought, why don't the two of us partner together to do an intention experiment inviting Muslims, Americans, and people around the world to send intention somewhere. And we decided it had to be Afghanistan. So we sent intention to the two southern uh, provinces in Afghanistan. You can see those two on the lower right. They're Helmand and Kandidar. And they were the most violent parts of that country. So we sent intention there, and we did it over eight days. We had thousands of people around the world, lots of Muslims, lots of Americans, all coming together for peace. And, you know, 
It looked like we had an effect. Uh, a German general, no less, from NATO. I got the details from him, the statistics about how we did. And it looked like, as he said in, in one of the reports, this is the largest sustained downward trend in enemy-initiated attacks recorded by the ISAF, which is the combined forces in NATO who were in Afghanistan. There were loads of amazing statistics, as you can see right here, lowering all kinds of, I don't know if it's just one of nine screens. If it is, I'll just tell you. We lowered civilian casualties, enemy attacks, attacks in the Southwest hugely, attacks across the entire country dropped 9%. Now, big question, did we do this? Short answer, who knows? There's a lot of variables with an experiment like this, including the seasons. Maybe we did, maybe it was pure coincidence, but it didn't occur in the rest of the country. But that isn't even the interesting part of the story. The interesting part of the story came afterward when I looked on my Facebook and social media pages and I found that the Americans and the Muslims were writing to each other. They were saying things like this. Your God is my God. We're like brothers from far away. The peace intention experiment was very healing for me as a citizen of the USA. Because what they were doing from both sides was forgiving each other, befriending each other, coming together in peace. That bigger project eliminated all of that leftover rancor from 9-11. I realized we were winning the war in another way. So that's the big idea with this experiment. I want to see whether or not this creates a little ripple effect of peace in your life, a feeling of brotherhood toward the people who are less like you, the people on the other side. But we're also going to be measuring it, and without dwelling on all the scientific stuff, I'll explain to you how we're going to do it. There's a guy called Roger Nelson, who is the leader of the Global Consciousness Project. And he has little machines called random event generators that are dotted around the world. And he has them running continuously. And they're random. They have an output that's 50% heads, let's say, and 50% tails all the time. But every so often, what he does is looks at what happens with those machines and compares it to moments of global coming together. Usually when some, there's some kind of calamity, like he's found that those machines veer off their random course during things like 9-11, during the death of Princess Diana, during certain things that American presidents do that aren't very popular, all kinds of things like that. But they also veer off their random course when people are coming together in peace or people are meditating together. So we've measured it during all of our other intention experiments. And we found that they change during our moments of peace. So the other thing we're going to be doing is a thing called Sputnik. And it's been created by a guy called Dr. Konstantin Karatkov. He's a Russian physicist, and he's created a way of measure, measuring subtle atmospheric changes in relation to human consciousness. And the thing he, that does this is this little tiny weird device that he has playfully called Sputnik. So in Jerusalem, Admin. Son, Carol, is going to be running one of these Sputnik devices. He will be measuring essentially the consciousness field to see whether or not 
our intention changes it. So let's now talk about what our target is. Our target is the old city of Jerusalem. Now, the main reason I've chosen this is because, and a lot of people said, why didn't you choose an area that's of high political, you know, violence, etc.? And the main reason I'm doing that is to avoid politics. This is about peace. It's not about politics. It's about bringing peace together in a different way. So we've chosen the old city because Jerusalem belongs to everybody. It belongs to the world. There are important things for everyone. There's the Western Wall for the Jews. There's the Dome of the Rock for the Muslims. There's the Church of the Holy Sepulchre for the Christians. It's a World Heritage Site, a heritage site according to UNESCO. The point, it, point is, it, it's a symbol of all of us coming together in one place. It belongs to no one and it belongs to everyone. So the idea that we can focus on an area that belongs to all of us is symbolic in itself. Now, let me just show you about Jerusalem because I want you to focus your mind. So I want you to focus on the target too. So here's a map of the old city. And if you can see this, and I know you're looking at nine screens, but if we can zero in on it, you'll see it has four distinct quarters. It belongs to everyone. It's got a Muslim quarter, it's got a Christian quarter, it's got a Jewish quarter, it's got an Armenian quarter that's Christian as well. So we're going to focus on that and we have one particular place in mind. If we can get that screen, can we get that screen up, the screen of the map? Okay, now if you see on the left hand side, just above the halfway point, you'll see Damascus Gate. And that's going to be one of the focuses of our intention because that area has suffered a lot of violence this past year. There has been, and this is what Damascus Gate looks like, there's a lot of extra security there, so there's been violence as a result. So this is not about politics, this is about bringing peace to that place that belongs to all of us. So when you're focusing your mind, I want you, as Jean said, to see it, feel it, taste it, smell it, hear it. Feel that place with all of your five senses. Feel people putting down their violent weapons and coming together, hugging each other, connecting in peace. See that in your mind's eye. The other thing I'm going to ask you to do is just be mindful of what happens to you. What I have found that's been so incredible with these intention experiments is that there's an incredible rebound effect. If you intend as a group for peace, it's very much the case that your life becomes more peaceful. You become more connected in relationships. Your relationships improve. It ripples out in your entire sphere of influence. So, Imagine what would happen with all of the thousands of people on this broadcast at this very moment if we were all to channel peace ourselves and have that ripple out into our lives. In our earlier peace intention experiments, we actually had people hugging strangers afterward. People were in love with everybody in the world. So my hope, my plan, my hope, is that this will have a rebound effect on you and that the real peace that will go on will be in your life. Maybe we'll lower violence, maybe we won't, but we still win if it connects you more in your life to peace, to people who are not like you, to people on the other side of the aisle. So I want you to think of all of those things and also note what's happening to you because I want to hear from you afterward. We're going to go around and talk to all of our participants and find out how it was for you. So get comfortable. We're going to begin.
And this is going to be, I'm going to play a little music when we do this. Um, I'm going to play uh, a song called Choco Ray by Jonathan Goldman. It's from an album called Reiki Chance, and it is uh, one that I have played for every intention experiment that I've run. So let's get comfortable again. Let's remember the target. Remember, it's the old city of Jerusalem. And we're going to, I'm going to show you that image of the old city while showing you the intention statement. And here it is. Our intention is to lower violence and restore peace in the old city of Jerusalem by at least 10% or more. Why am I specifically suggesting a number? Well, we found in all of our intention experiments that it focuses consciousness much more and it's far more uh, successful when you actually put a number in there, when you make it specific, 10% or more. So it can be 100%, but it's at least 10% or more. And we found with our earlier peace intention experiments, we've usually got around the 10% or more mark. So, and why are we mentioning lowering violence? Because we're being specific. We want to restore peace, we want to lower violence, but we're not just asking for world peace, we're being specific. We're focusing on a specific target and we're making a specific suggestion. So are you re ready to begin now, everybody? Get comfortable in your chair. Ease yourself <clears throat> back. Put your feet on the floor. Settled and stable. And now let's take a deep inhale and a deep exhale. We can stay on that slide. We can stay on that slide, but we're going to play the music with it. Our intention is to lower violence and restore peace in the old city of Jerusalem, focusing on Damascus Gate by at least 10% or more. A deep inhale now. A deep exhale. A deep inhale. And a deep exhale. A deep inhale. And now a deep exhale. A deep inhale, and now as you exhale, formulate that intention in your mind. Our intention is to lower violence and restore peace in the old city of Jerusalem by at least 10% or more. Imagine it with your five senses. See people putting down their weapons. See people restoring peace there. See people hugging each other, hugging strangers, reaching across the aisle. And I want you to hold those intentions in your mind as you imagine yourself holding the hands of everyone on either side of you. And if you're actually in a room, you can do that now. Hold the hands of the people on either side of you. If you're watching on YouTube, Imagine you're holding the hands of everybody, all the thousands of people on this call. And so just keep coming back to that intention. Bring it down to your heart. It doesn't come from your head, it comes from your heart. And send it out, almost like it was unfurling from you toward the old city of Jerusalem. And let's just hold this together. And every so often, go back to that intention statement and just refocus your mind on it as you allow it also 
to flood itself with images, visualizations, hallucinations of peace and connection and love. So stay connected and feel what that feels like too. Are you feeling extra energy? Are you feeling the connection of everyone else on this call, on this YouTube video, in that room? Can you feel the electricity? Can you feel that building? And just hold this. And we'll hold this for some minutes. Can you feel the connection? Do you feel heat? Are you seeing peace?
now. With a last image of peace, a last feeling of connection, I'd like you to slowly let go of that intention, trust the process, and in your own time, open up your eyes and come on back into the room. And we can slowly turn off the music too. And if you're holding hands, disengage. Come on back into the present. Slowly come back into the present. So, how did that feel? Would anybody like to talk to us about how that felt? Yes. So we have someone from? A man. A man. How are you? We feel that our tears uh, falling down during this intention experience. Okay, so Aman, um, you were all crying. That's very common. And it's just because that kind of connection is so overwhelming. I hear this all the time. And I can see that's the case with so many people everywhere who are part of this call. There's something about coming together as one, our natural state, that is so overwhelming, so powerful. It's very common. It doesn't mean you're sad. It just means you're overwhelmed. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, what about Jerusalem? Jerusalem, do we have anybody who wants to say anything from Jerusalem? I've seen all those people on the stage. Please go up on stage. Come on stage. Come. Or stand up. Stand up. Just so oh, we stand up. Just so we here she stands up. Okay, so we need we need her to have a mic. We need, we need her to have a mic. Yeah. Okay, I'm so I went in. Uh our guy, Jewish lady. Dancing, having a good time. Yeah, it's a party, you see me? <laughs> like to party here. Yeah. Great. Great. Big party. Like Big party. They tell about everything in the media, like it's amazing and it's nice and everybody, yeah, it's fun. They like a uh, holiday, like holiday. Celebration, yeah. That's what we have here, celebration. Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. How did you feel during the meditation? Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, great. Hello, Jerusalem. <laughs> she saw something else. Yes. And that was amazing. She saw like a commercial that you see on the road, and it was written, the peace is already here. Wow. We, we, yeah. Great. That was fast. That was very fast. That's so great. Thank you. That's wonderful. Anybody else want to say something from Jerusalem? Here, over there. I, I will translate you, definitely. Did you see me? Did 
Oh, hello. She took a course of ours in Bosnia. I took this course in Tayshin Nia and Dr. Salah. And Dr. Salah told Mahli, I want to meet someone from Israel. And I told Lin, Lin, I want to do something here for East Middle East with you and with Dr. Salah. And I see that it's happened here. Yes. And Dr. This woman has strong intentions. You can see it. <laughs> you have very strong intentions. Good enough. Okay. Thank you. I say that I I believe and I do now a big project that I have to do with also with Salah, Dr. Salah Al Rashid in uh, White House to do a piece for Middle East. Inshallah, be is an Allah. I give it also in Arabic that it will be strong that we can make a piece here. Thank Wonderful. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So let's go. Wonderful. We'll come back. Let's go to some of the other Arab countries. Let's see who else had an experience they'd like to share. Jeddah. Jeddah in Saudi Arabia. This is so cool. Yes, can, can we turn her up? Uh, I saw uh, vivid images of uh, Jews, Christians, Arabs together. Uh, so beautifully, very happy. Uh, kids playing, uh, uh, women, uh, young people, old people, different ages, together in harmony. I saw every kind of religion, the Christian, the Muslims, practicing their own religion so beautifully in peace. I heard the voices of the Christian religion, uh, the prayer, the Jews praying, the Muslim uh, Adam, well, uh, it's very strong feelings of oneness together. I saw myself there. Uh, I felt very strong love for the Jews, in spite of our raising up to hate the Jews, all right? So uh, beautiful feelings, beautiful images, of unity, oneness, love, and peace. Wonderful. Thank Wonderful. You. Wonderful. Okay, Jerusalem. Do you want to say anything back? Do you want to say something back? Anyone want to say something back? Did say it? something back? Yeah. Thank you so much, Lynn. It was very powerful. And thank you, everybody. All over the world, it's amazing, it's exciting, it's overwhelming, it's overwhelming, mm -hmm. and I believe in our intention, and I believe it's going to be faster than we actually think it will. So thank you, Lynn, and thank you, everybody. You, oh, wonderful, wonderful, thank you. Let's get, let's get another comment from one of the other Middle Eastern <laughs> countries. Oh, sorry, did you want to say something? Let's go, yeah, this is... For Jerusalem? 
Can we get her mic on? I'm saying that it's hugely emotional and very exciting. And I've been seeing images of Damascus Gate where we live in Jerusalem when we know it personally. And I've seen images of hugging of soldiers and Arab people, of kindness one to another, of flowers all around Damascus. I've seen the four quarters of the old city as the four rooms of my personal heart. Mm, beautiful. And blood going in between oh, wow. the four rooms and sharing love and inshallah peace to all of us. Wonderful. Thank you. Wonderful. Wonderful. What a beautiful image. Um, can we hear from another Muslim country? And then I want to share with you why this is happening. A little bit of interesting science. Anybody else want to make a comment? Any of the other Muslim countries? Abu Dhabi. Yes. Excuse me? Yes. Yes, you're on Abu Dhabi. Uh, yeah. Would you like to say something? Um, yes. Uh, some of us uh, see that uh, Israelis are dancing, the Palestinians uh, uh, dance, which is Dabka, and they, uh, they hug each other, and they give love, and they actually, yeah, and fireworks. Uh, and I personally actually see that it's the first time uh, um, we are with the, the Israelis uh, like we share peace and love, uh, which is an amazing uh, thing that I want to thank you and everybody participate in this uh, participation. And Dr. Salah as well. And we are yeah. happy to be here. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Wonderful. So beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Fantastic. Would you like to say something? So here, we, what have we got on the bottom? Tunisia. Hi there. Uh, hi. 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 Yes, when we sent the intention, I saw a lot of children running and laughing. And there's a lot of uh, butterflies and wearing the white clothes and running, running, running. And there is a lot of a loud voice of laughing. That's all. Wonderful. Thank you. Wonderful. Beautiful. Beautiful. Now, how fantastic. I want to just tell you one little bit of information about why this opens the heart so much. Um, there is a guy called Dacker Keltner. Can we show this slide up? He is from the University of California at Berkeley. And he studies goodness. Um, he's done some amazing studies. And he did one study of students. And he showed them pictures that were altruistic <coughs> pictures, pictures of the world's victims that would elicit sympathy and love. And another group, he showed lots of pictures that was designed to elicit pride, pictures of their school colors and their football team. With the group that he showed pictures of the starving children and where people had a desire for change, essentially like an intention, this is what happened. It's really interesting. It activates a thing called the vagus nerve, which is the longest nerve in your body. And that nerve, in turn, activates all of the areas of you involved with love and compassion, like rele the release of a, a hormone called oxytocin. But here's what's really cool about it. What it also does, it makes us more willing and desirous of connecting with people not like us. People that we might have had as enemies before. People who we consider the other. 
And when you do an intention like ours, you activate this whole system that turns on, that makes you a love machine, that makes you want to hug the other side, that makes you want to hug strangers. And that's what makes it so important. Coming together as a peace intention experiment is something that could ignite universal love all over the world. Now, before I close, would anybody like to say anything from any of the groups? Let's get all of you back on the screen. Let's get all of the nine windows. And if you'd like to say something more, just raise your hand up. Is there anything you'd like to say to the Arabs, Israelis? Is there anything you guys in the different Arab countries would like to say to the Israelis and everyone else out there? How are you feeling now? Now, yeah. How are any of you feeling now? Feeling now. Yes. Hi. Anyway, all these places that there are people who are with us talk to us about how moving it is to connect around this. It's just so wonderful to hear from you. I'm just so happy to have that opportunity. So just thank you. That is so phenomenal. Thank you. You know, it doesn't take much. It doesn't take much. It just takes. There's something so powerful about group prayer. And that's what we were doing, weren't we? We were doing a group prayer. And whether it's large or small, there's something amazingly transformational about that. Yes, there's somebody who is standing up um, from Jeddah, is it? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I want to thank you first for, uh, I'm so glad that I shared this uh, wonderful experiment, experience. Uh, you took me to the place I really love, okay? Uh, I saw there, uh, sunny day, uh, lots of people uh, laughing, lots and lots and lots of joy and happiness. I wish I could stay there. I wish I didn't come back. I love it. Thank you, Alpha. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, everybody. Yes. Hi there. So we have this from Sfaxia, is it? From, from Tunisia. Yeah. Hi. I want to introduce myself. My name is Fatima Salemi. And the piece in, Arab, in Arabic means Salem. And my name is Salemi. So I feel in peace, so my peace, I send my peace to uh, the old city, to Al-Quddus. Uh, uh, I feel in love. I love all people in the whole world. I love you. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you, Jane. And I want to be your student. I'm so proud to hear you today. And I want to thank uh, uh, Dr. Salah for this big uh, opportunity and I want to uh, thank uh, Mayada for this uh, opportunity. I love you so much and I feel full of love and full of peace. Wonderful. As our God, your God is my God. I love you. Thank you. Thank you. That is so beautiful. That is so amazing. Um, I, does anyone want to say anything else before I close? That was so beautiful, and I do love that outfit. That was phenomenal. That was wonderful. Okay, everyone, uh, I think we, are we losing, did we lose Jerusalem? They're there, there they are, yay. Okay, does someone else want to say something?
so overwhelming the possibility to be connected with you, our sister, in Amman and in Damascus and in Iran and all over. We are thousands, hundreds of thousands of women here saying enough, it's about time to unite. Women of the world unite. Absolutely. We are one. We are one. It's Absolutely. Passion. It's time of healing. Thank you, dear sisters. We are one. That is so beautiful. Thank you so much. Now, I want to extend my thanks, by the way, speaking of Jerusalem, to one woman, speaking of a woman, Sippy Raz, whose vision has been, and she's been talking with me for two years to try to help put this event together. And she is largely responsible for that, that audience there in Jerusalem. So thank you so much, Sippy. I also want to show you, we're going to be closing now. I want to just let everybody know though, they can continue the conversation in two ways. Sippy has, and we, if we can show this screen, that Jerusalem event is carrying on for several hours more. If you would like to, just go to my screen, please. If you would like to continue to watch that, you can do so, and there it is, to go to connect with it in English, that's the, the, web, uh, the web address, Arabic or Hebrew. And just to let you know, the intention experiments are always free. Sippy has had to rent a large venue for this event, um, and is going to have to pay for that. That was a last minute situation. So she is requesting a nominal sum. When you go on those websites, you'll see that. So if you want to carry on watching, you just pay that nominal sum and you can watch the whole evening's events carry on. Yes, yes, everybody there in Jerusalem. So take note of that website if you want to carry on. For anybody else who wants to join in the conversation, you can carry on, please go back to my slide. You can carry on. We have a continuation either on YouTube, there is instant messaging, or you can carry on conversing with everybody around the world on my Facebook page. That's just Lynn McTaggart 2011. So just take that down. You can either go to our YouTube site for those people who are watching, carry on the conversation, continue to talk about peace, continue to talk about what's happening to you, continue to spread this around the world, and understand that it doesn't take big politicians to create peace. It doesn't take all kinds of complicated negotiations. It just takes a simple, simple group prayer to bring everybody together for peace.